The next talk will be given by Igor Shell from Gazprom Neft Science and Technology Center. Hello, colleagues. Today I'm talking. I'm going to talk about well, uh, technological and economical optimization of hydraulic fracturing uh, with Planner 3D model. Uh, well, <laughs> my talk will be less theoretic than any else, I suppose, but I think it will be interesting, at least for some of you, because uh, actually I used a model which Professor Pierce described before, and I suppose some uh, <laughs> some of our colleagues will describe after. <laughs> so, well, that is uh, our few experiments in the company Gazprom Neft. Uh, and uh, some features that we found uh, comparing theory and, experiment and the real data. Uh, first of all, uh, what is the purpose of um, numerical modeling in, uh, in engineering applications? Uh, there is, well, four basic things. First, it's uh, choosing of propon type uh, and uh, fluid type. Uh, you choose the materials you need to um, perform a good job. Uh, second is choosing the pumping shadow. Uh, some specific features like injection rate, buffer volume, uh, maximum and average propon concentration and the concentration, uh, and the concentration grows on time and so on. Uh, third, it's evaluation of the fracture geometry. It's uh, its height, its length, uh, its connection to the other uh, reservoirs, uh, fracture permeability, and so on. Uh, so the parameters which affects on the hydrodynamic of the fracture and the economy of the fracture. And the last but not least is prognosis of the borehole and wellhead pressures. Uh, for example, this. Uh, uh, this graph. Uh, it's uh, important because you have always the technological uh, limits and you need to prognose, uh, to predict the, your borehole and wellhead pressure to avoid the critical, um, critical points and to avoid the, <laughs> to avoid the technical uh, limits. So, well, uh, let's talk about the main idea of uh, choosing the design and uh, at which stages we will need some uh, basics of mathematical modeling. First of all, we should need to choose propant, then we choose uh, for this type of propant. We, uh, well, first of all, we choose uh, for each reservoir, we may choose uh, the optimal propant. For this optimal propant, we should choose some optimal liquid. And for this combination of propant and liquid, we choose uh, the uh, pump shadow. And the last stage, which I won't actually discuss today, it's, uh, well, a high level economical optimization of design based on uh, macroeconomic parameters. Because uh, depending of uh, oil prices and propant prices, uh, you will obtain a different optimal propant mass per fracturing stage and <laughs> a total number of stages. Uh, it also depends actually on macroeconomic parameters as more than on physics. So I won't discuss this particular topic. So, well, from the beginning, uh, choosing of propon type, uh, the idea is very simple. Uh, the main uh, parameter of uh, fracture, which describes its quality, its dimension is fracture conductivity. So uh, if dimension is fracture conductivity is rather high, like up to, up to 10 and more, uh, like here, uh, it would be almost infinitely, uh, infinite uh, permeable fracture comparing to the reservoir around. So we need to achieve these parameters. Uh, and, the main para and the main thing which affects these parameters uh, is the propant properties. So we need to choose propant which will uh, have rather high uh, permeability at the reservoir um, conditions, mainly the reservoir stress stresses which affects on the fracture. Uh, so if we make some estimation on the order of, uh, of quantity, uh, we see that dimensionless conductivity proportional to three ratios. It's ratio between absolute and bulk densities, which is in order of two. It's uh, some dimensionless parameter, uh, which is less than unity. And this is two parameters. That is ratio between uh, effective, effective pressures inside the fracture and effective young models. 
and that is the ratio between the fracture permeability and reservoir permeability. Uh, so just from my field, exper field experiment and from, from the field statistics, I just uh, will say you that this parameter is, has the order uh, 10 in power minus, minus four. So it's zero and zero, zero, zero point one. Point one. Uh, and so it, it, it leads that we need to uh, have the permeability of propant in 100,000 times more than, uh, than permeability of reservoir. So that's very simple. And the second condition we need to follow is that the, inside those categories of propant, uh, we should to keep the propant as small and light as possible. Because the smaller and uh, propant with uh, less uh, density will be easier to carry. Uh, I mean, the less viscosity of fluid will be required and the less viscosity of fluid required, uh, the longer the fracture will obtain for the same uh, mass of propant. And the longer the fracture, uh, the, better, uh, the better the fluid income uh, to the well will be after the hydraulic fracturing. So, well, second part. We should, to ch we chose the propant, we should to choose the, uh, we should to choose uh, some fluid which will be effective for this propant. And here is uh, the point when the mathematical modeling starts. Uh, the simple uh, way to uh, estimate the effective fluid is false. We have a settlement speed of stocks uh, from the stocks formula, uh, and we have some average horizontal speed. Um, uh, so the main idea is that we have some dimensions parameter, which uh, is ratio between settlement speed and horizontal speed. Uh, it's written here. I estimated it from four parameters, diameter of propant, uh, density uh, difference between fluid and propant, uh, well, the G constant, the gravity constant, um, propant, uh, reservoir thickness, effective pressures in the, in the fracture, uh, K and N is a rheological parameter I will show above. Uh, I will show below what, is, what does it mean. And also the young models and uh, the fluid rate uh, speed. So uh, the point is false. We have dimensions parameter and we just model with different, uh, with different value of these dimensions parameter to evaluate the limit at which uh, the, the fluid will be effective. So we just did this, did this modeling use, used the, using the planar 3D model and uh, some model of uh, proper transport, which I will show above, uh, show, show, which I will show below. Uh, and well, so uh, the empirical uh, criterion is this, that this parameter should be less than five, uh, zero point zero zero five, uh, well, 0.05. So, well, that's it. Uh, the, the interesting thing is that for each fluid, we actually have some fluid rate, which definitely will uh, make this fluid efficient. But the problem is, is that uh, not every fluid rate is possible because we have technological limit of fluid rate injection, I mean, injection rate. And we have also the limit uh, which grows from the, which uh, follows from the frictional uh, criteria. For example, uh, just imagine that we have some critical pressure which uh, the hydraulic fraction fleet uh, can handle. It's uh, 700 or 100, uh, 1000 at, uh, atmosphere. Uh, so we have uh, the rock stresses inside the, the, the fracture. We have some effective additional uh, f uh, pressure. We have hydrostatic pressure, which decreases uh, the well head pressure, and we have friction in the in the in the well in the well, uh, which uh, leads to growth of um, uh, of well head pressure, and it increases uh, the well head pressure with increase of. Um, with increase of uh, fluid rate. So we have two different limits. Uh, the minimum of this will be the maximum possible uh, fluid rate. And the idea is simple. 
we can calculate for each fluid and each uh, combination of propant, we may calculate the limits of fluid rates. And if uh, our maximum fluid rate is more than our minimal fluid rate, so there is some gap for uh, this combination to be effective. Uh, so that's idea, mm, that simple idea actually shows us which fluids and propants will be effective for each case. Uh, I promised you to show uh, something from the field. That is, uh, that, that, that here we start to discuss our field experiments. Uh, we conducted uh, some testing, uh, some te some testing pump, and we conducted the main pump. This is propant uh, itself, and uh, before that we measured the real real parameter of the fluid, of the main fluid. Uh, it was measured by the so-called stability test. It is a long test for three hours and so, which at some moments of time had uh, uh, had its speed rota rotation speed changed from 175, 50, and uh, 25 uh, hertz. Uh, so, using this uh, pseudoplastic rheology, we uh, and describe, uh, we will describe our fluid, our fraction fluid. Uh, well, so that is uh, the result which we obtained from the testing, uh, testing pump, uh, test pump, pumping. Uh, the main idea is that we had, that is the fluid rate which were decreasing during the pump. Uh, during the pumping. Uh, and uh, the main idea was to check uh, the dependency of frictional uh, losses in the well bore, uh, in the well, uh, depending on, on the mm, fluid rate. So, well, here I plotted some correlation. I, uh, mm, here is some table for, for this correlation. It's very simple, actually. Uh, and well, so I described one of one part. I described this part, yes, frictional coefficients from the fluid rate. Uh, the next point, the next point was to check how our uh, wellbore friction model works uh, if we grow the concentration of propant. And there was like four or five different uh, correlation models, and the correlation model uh, prescribed by Scott uh, performed the best. Here we see that the red line is uh, uh, is the um, is the result of the model. Uh, it's uh, well had pressure in the model, and the green line is the uh, actual pressure at the wellhead. So, well, the convergence is rather good. So, the model of Scott uh, sh showed the good convergence with this. Well, uh, well, but it wasn't the main interest, it wasn't the main point of this, of course, uh, of this uh, field experiment. The main, the main point was to uh, calibrate and to check uh, the geometry of fracture and the model, the planar 3D model itself. So, Actually, we do, we do know that the planar 3D model was already um, validated in the laboratory, uh, but it was validated, validated without propant uh, in the Bunger experiments. Uh, so, well, here we, in the first stage, we, at the testing uh, pump, we believe to the planar 3D model and we calibrate the data from uh, the field, uh, which is, which contains uh, the distribution of rock stresses, Young modulus and Poisson modulus, which Yeager and Sof showed you before, for example. Um, so we calibrate uh, this model for with some multiplying factors uh, to converge the borehole pressure of model with borehole pressure in the real experiment. Uh, here you may see that, well, I, uh, th that is the model line and that is the actual line. And well, the convergence is rather good, uh, especially in, at these stages when the fluid rheology became stable. Uh, so that's it. We calibrated the model. We uh, made all, all of our preparations. So we decreased as, as much as we can the uncertainty in, in our uh, data. Uh, so now we may check the, uh, the model itself. Uh, and that there is an interesting thing. Uh, of course, I, 
I conduct, I, we conducted uh, like four, uh, four, it was like seven stages in general and it was like four wells uh, in total. In, in our experiment, it was conducted uh, in uh, December of uh, previous year. Uh, and one of these experiments was uh, chosen to be the most interesting one. It was so-called an aggressive pump, which means that there was a few uh, fluid and a lot of propant inside this uh, pump. Uh, and the interesting point, the first uh, step, the first uh, time, uh, at the first stages, uh, the convergence is extremely good. It's, well, it really shows that we did our job well. We calibrated the model precisely. Uh, you see the, again, the, the gray line is, is model and the brown line is the fact. But after the point of approximately 38 to 45 minutes, there is a little discrepancy which start to grow dramatically. And in fact, this, uh, this uh, pumping was an, uh, before critical. Uh, there was only uh, 50 atmosphere lift uh, left to the technical, uh, technical limit. Uh, so, the main goal, the main problem is that this decrease, uh, th this increase is very rapid. It cannot be explained by uh, the pure model of fracture. Uh, because if you analyze the planar 3D model, uh, especially the pressure growth rate, it cannot grow faster than, uh, um, uh, than uh, in, Pe in uh, Perkins model. Uh, and here is uh, like, it's, it, it cannot grow faster than this trend, but this trend is uh, like, it's like faster than the speed of light in, uh, in, uh, <laughs> in language of our theory. So what happened? Uh, according to the model, it, uh -huh, that's, that's good, I will, I, I will finish. Uh, so according to the model itself, uh, at this point uh, happened so-called uh, tip screen out. It means that the propant, uh, that the density, that the propant concentrations at the fracture tip became critical and uh, it stopped the fracture growth. And after this point, uh, the fracture uh, stopped it growth and uh, the propant pack should, and the propant started to pack uh, from the end to the, be to the beginning of the fracture. Uh, so my, my idea was to in, somehow increase uh, the, uh, the prediction capacity of the model. And I decided, I invented very, very stupid idea, very, uh, uh, that uh, in the propant pack, in the highly, in the critical concentration, uh, in the propant pack, uh, the pressure gradient is determined by Darcy law, not the, uh, Poiseuille law for the uh, propane suspension. So the uh, the, uh, the the behavior of uh, pressure differs dramatically in um, in in propane pack. Uh, I just estimated the value of uh, the pressure gradient in this pack pack, and it turned to be like ten atmosphere per meter. If we uh, will take this hypothesis for true. And the interesting thing is that it's, it really fits for our data, that uh, approximately the pr pressure difference will grow uh, proportional to this zone of uh, prop and pack. And uh, prop and pack zone will grow linearly on time if the concentration is, uh, or prop and concentration is constant, and faster if you continue to grow your prop and concentration. And that was exactly the case because here concentration of prop and growth in two times during the prop and pack. So it indeed can explain this non-linear fast growth of bottom hole pressure. Uh, so we adopted, uh, we just broke the code and adopted this stupid idea. And we see that convergence of the model uh, it has grown um, sufficiently. Because now it was like, it was like this, yes? It was like this, only on 35 minutes is the last point of convergence. And now it's like this, it's like 65 minutes is the last point of convergence and the total pressure is much closer to the, to the real ones. Uh, the, my idea, uh, I conducted this, uh, ex we conducted this experiment just to make sure uh, which 
propent transport model is best because as we see the time of tip screen out uh, is highly uh, should be a, a very important parameter because if screen out became became uh, starts earlier the rapid pressure growth would start it earlier so you should choose a, a, a decent propent transport model to predict this point uh, and we had like four different variants for propent transport model in the literature and like five uh, propent bridging criteria so in total it was 20 variants i i've made some uh, calibrations and the best the best match was this combination sharma model for propent transport and dansov model jaeger dansov which previously was here uh, who previously was here um, uh, for propent bridging so well that's about my, our, my idea from the field experiment and the idea of uh, technical optimization now it's very simple the optimal uh, the optimal pump should be should sh should have stopped at 45 minutes the optimal pump should stop at the moment of uh, tip screen out because uh, this is just the example how it should have have been done because if you have early time of tip screen out you will obtain a uh, small lens and big thickness fracture if you make a late uh, tip screen out and low you will obtain low thickness of fracture and <laughs> higher reserve commutation because you will pump more than you need so the optimal uh, the optimal pump will, will be just exactly uh, when the pumping time stops at the tip screen out uh, so well, that is my idea. I think it's very simple. I tried to describe it in 15 minutes and well, that's it. Actually, we may, uh, we may go to questions. Here is some literature uh, on the basis. Unfortunately, uh, the article which describes the full pack of models in our simulator was only in Russian. Uh, thank you. And only four pages long. <laughs> okay. <laughs> <laughs> okay, thank you very much, Igor. Uh, so now we are open for questions, please. Hello, may I start? Yes, sure. Yes. Uh, thank you for your presentation. So it's 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 so it's very interesting. Um, one comment, maybe actually they are both comments. Um, so the first thing is on on the idea of pressure history matching, right? Um, this part, this part, yes. Right, yeah, in general, you know, it's good to have pressure history match uh, the results, but, but the thing is you may have, it's, it's very non-unique in a sense, you may have very different fracture geometries giving you the same, the same, um, the same uh, pressures. Mm, I used not only, I used not only the pressure curve, I also used uh, uh, the data of, uh, of series of uh, fractures before, uh, of uh, this uh, structure, it's uh, it's actually derived from acoustic caratage. So, well, there was uh, there was not so many variants uh, to obtain this because actually, yes, I obtained two or three different uh, variants how to um, how to converge this, but all these variants gave me this uh, picture like this. Mm -hmm. Right. So another comment again is then, um, I mean, you might have you know perforation friction and and you might have you know they call it near well bore, uh, near well -bore uh, pressure drop the perforation and, friction eager is uh, mm -hmm. this this it's this quantity because when i dropped uh, to i have uh, had i had a borehole uh, manometer uh, a little bit higher than mm -hmm. the borehole point so uh, when I stopped to pump, uh, all this friction pressure inside the perforation dropped at this moment. But it's only like 15 atmos 50 atmospheres. Uh, but the discrepancy was like two and two and uh, half. Uh, I, agree. I mean, this is screen out. I mean, I'm not questioning this. I mean, this is screen out. I'm, I'm just, I'm just, just you know, general comments and. Mm -hmm. and, and and just in general, you know, for the near well bore, and even if you don't have any near well bore, if you just say simulate a radial fracture, you're going to have logarithmic singularity of pressure in the model. And so when you do your planar model, I mean, you discretize it. And of course, your pressure is, 
is finite. Uh, right? It's still some. It's implicitly a set algorithm. Yes, right. So, but but you do have finite, uh, you know, finite mesh size, right? And so your your pressure is finite at the well bore, right? So, but but actually, do you have here point injection or you have like a line source? You have multiple uh, line source. It was a line source, uh, fifteen meters in general. Uh, well, let's see. Maybe I have yes. There, there it is. The brown, uh, the brown, uh, the brown line is the liner point. That's good. And about my second comment or question is about propant, right? So, I mean, so you very nicely pointed out that, that you know, you do have this transition to Darcy law once, once you have packed. But, you know, this actually was the whole idea of this propant transport model that we work on with Anthony Pierce, right? You know, back in 2014, is that you have a propant transport model, which, um, you know, for dilute suspensions, it, it basically represents the classical transport model with settling. And once you have tip screen out, and when 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 you pack and you prop it near the tip, it automatically and continuously um, changes to Darcy. Okay. Uh, well, Igor, you know, uh, actually, I worked uh, in collaboration with my colleague from uh, Skoltech, who mm -hmm. actually uh, gave us the prop and transient model, and they said that they tried to implement your model uh, directly uh, inside, mm -hmm. and. Uh, I'm not really sure uh, whether there was, uh, because the first result wasn't really good. And I'm not sure, was it because uh, there was some back in code or uh, was it because, well, mm, the model wasn't so good. But I, 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 I do, I, I am aware about your and Anthony work and I actually, we actually tried to uh, do this. I suppose that um, that is some results of your model actually, because I just yeah. described the general idea. Yeah, because the physics is similar, okay? So, so yes, whatever yes, yes. Uh, I, I suppose model. Uh, your model was the model which was actually <laughs> implemented here. Okay, okay. Thank you. That's all. Then thank you, Igor, once again.